In the southwest region of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's biggest city, lies a sprawling project 58 years in the making. Billions of dollars have gone down the drain for this project, and it might be the latest dividend of a fruitful bilateral agreement between Egypt and Tanzania. While it may not be as expansive as Tanzania's biggest commercial city, it's definitely projected to be just as impactful. On the 20th of February 2024, El Suidi Electric announced that the Julius Nyerere hydropower plant and dam was 95% complete. The Tanzanian dam has been on for five years now and is set to be the fourth largest in Africa and the ninth in the world. Easily one of Tanzania's most expensive and impactful projects to date, it's capable of churning out gigawatt hours of energy in the thousands, which will benefit about 60 million Tanzanians. Join us as we explore the Julius Nyerere hydropower plant and dam, its inception, cost, contractors, construction, capabilities, and potential. It might not be as high and monstrous as Mount Kilimanjaro or as illustrious and thrilling as the Serengeti, but it's definitely a structural and hydro wonder. The Julius Nyerere Dam, named after the country's first president, Julius Kambarage Nyerere, is a project decades in the making. The plan for the dam had been put out by Julius Nyerere himself in the 1960s as an answer to the country's prevailing need for a constant supply of electricity. However, that dream didn't become a reality until 58 years later. In 2018, the Tanzania Electric Supply Company and Tanzania National Roads Agency, both active ministries of the Tanzanian government, signed a collaborative contract with Arab contractors and El Suidi Electric of Egypt for the dam. For those who don't know, Arab Contractors is an Egyptian multi-billion dollar construction firm with a wealthy portfolio of impressive infrastructure in Africa. Meanwhile, El Suidi Electric is a multinational, family-owned Egyptian company with a focus on energy and infrastructure to enable businesses, communities, and whole regions to grow. In essence, there were no two firms more capable for Tanzania's dream project. Estimates for the cost of building the dam and hydropower plant ran up to $2.9 billion which is almost 8 trillion in Tanzanian shillings. It was undoubtedly a tasking financial investment for one of the poorest countries in the world. But the details of the mega project were enough self-explanation for such a huge investment. The Julius Nyerere Dam was projected to be 1,025 meters long and 131 meters high with seven spacious water outlets and a reservoir capable of holding up to 34 billion cubic meters. Such a monstrous storage capacity was required to sustain a hydroelectric power plant capable of generating 2,115 megawatts and transmitting them through 400 kVA power lines. In addition to the main dam, there would be four additional auxiliary dams required to form a storage tank for water, three diversion tunnels carrying water to the turbine building, and a permanent bridge. But that's not all. To facilitate dam management and transportation to and from its environs, a permanent camp for workers will be built alongside state-of-the-art roads. With all of this taken into account, it became obvious that the economic and environmental potential of a project with such dimensions would far outweigh its deep pocket budget. On the 29th of July 2019, Arab contractors and El Suidi Electric kicked off work on the dam. The location of choice was the Morogoro region of the country, across the Rafiji River at Stiegler's Gorge in the Celis Game Reserve. It began with an excavation of 200,000 cubic meters for a diversion tunnel 700 meters long, 17 meters wide, and 21 meters high, running from the Rufiji River to the dam. Given the high expectations regarding the dam's range, reinforced cement concrete, also known as RCC, was employed for its tensile strength and load-carrying capacities. Right after the excavation, the diversion tunnel was lined with 50,000 cubic meters of RCC. However, in 2020, the construction hit a snag. The construction site was overflooded due to its proximity to the rising Rafiji River and high levels of consistent heavy rainfall, thereby slowing work on the project and affecting the river diversion through the constructed tunnel. As if that wasn't enough, the COVID-19 pandemic came in, making it difficult to ship the necessary materials for the project through Tanzania's borders. However, the contractors forged on in the face of such awful conditions. Even though work was slow, they got to finish the river diversion around November of the same year. With the floods abating and the border and travel restrictions from the COVID pandemic easing, work resumed in earnest, transitioning straight from the river diversion into more excavations. First in line was the excavation for the main dam, which was a million cubic meters. 
Then the excavation for the powerhouse followed with a measurement of 2.7 million cubic meters. The next construction process was laying the foundations for the switchyard, which would receive the energy generated from the powerhouse. The construction of the main dam on the excavated site was supposed to begin right after, but again, work was interrupted by another spate of flooding in 2021. As soon as the flood ceased to be a problem, the contractors resumed work at earnest. With a workforce of 12,500 people, 90% consisting solely of local workers from among the Tanzanian population, and 10% from foreign sources, including the host country Egypt, the Tanzanian government was assured of steady progress. The main dam construction consumed an RCC of 1.7 million cubic meters. With the main dam taking shape, the next item on the list was the power waterways. 133,000 cubic meters of RCC were used for the power waterways. With the concrete lining complete, the waterways were reinforced with 7,000 tons of penstock to help limit maximum pressure as the water moved towards the turbines. Work then resumed on the powerhouse, starting from the insulation of 16 segments of draft tubes intended to increase the water pressure as it left the turbine's runner. All in all, the construction of the powerhouse consumed 350,000 cubic meters of RCC. Next, 1,800 tons of outdoor material, including steel bars and insulators, were constructed atop the foundations of the switchyard to bring the structure near completion. The 400 kV switchyard had 340 cables spanning 180 kilometers and two control buildings for the switch gears, control units, panels, and the 29 power transformers capable of power levels of 92 MVA. The excavation for the saddle dams or auxiliary dams, which would support the main dam in terms of storage and water elevation, was 1.5 million cubic meters. The excavation site was then filled with 5.3 million cubic meters of earth and rocks. Saddle Dam 1 is specifically an RCC gravity dam, which would hold back water and ensure that other parts of the dam remain stable. At the same time, construction for the bridge was ongoing. The measurements for the bridge came in at 250 meters in length, 50 meters in height, and 12 meters in width, which was more than enough to carry powerhouse parts across the Rufiji River. The 2022 flood brought construction on the dam to a halt, but only temporarily. In similar fashion with past flooding experiences, the contractors resumed work on the dam, bringing it up to the projected specifications. A 158,000 square kilometers reservoir capable of holding 32.7 billion cubic meters of water. The powerways were also beginning to fit the picture. It had a power intake height of 70 meters and was also fitted with trash racks and inlet gates essential components for controlling the flow of water. Meanwhile, three tunnels with a total length of 1,250 meters ran from the power intake to the surge tanks, which are necessary for storage, among other things. The powerhouse of the dam, another megastructure, is located at the right side of the Rufiji River, approximately 500 meters downstream of the dam. Measuring 305 meters in length, 60 meters in width, and 80 meters in height, it was also nearing total completion. The power plant in the powerhouse consisted of nine Francis turbines, each of them capable of generating 235 megawatts of energy. Nine butterfly valves were installed to help cut off the flow of water to the powerhouse, and nine power generators helped propel the turbines. Regardless of the electricity generated by the dam, three diesel generators were installed in the powerhouse to control the power plant, dam, and spillway. Besides the obvious, the powerhouse also has necessary top-notch maintenance systems responsible for important aspects of the dam's operation like ventilation, communications, water and sewage cooling, firefighting, and air conditioning. To ensure safety and security, the contractors also installed state-of-the-art protection, monitoring, and control equipment. Furthermore, the completion of the permanent bridge, strong and capable enough to withstand up to 360 tons of weight, eased transportation to and from the construction site. Since a residential area was also part of the plan, 170,000 square meters was carved out for the office center, administrative buildings, sports area, clinic, and residences, which consisted of 39 buildings and other facilities. 59 kilometers of temporary access roads were developed to connect all the facilities, including the residential and office areas with the dam and hydropower plant. Meanwhile, 29 kilometers of access road connect the dam site to other existing road networks. It's also important to note that much of the construction on site wouldn't have been possible without coffer dams. Coffer dams are usually built within water bodies, so the enclosed zone can be pumped out to create dry areas for work to be conducted successfully. And the Julius Nyerere Dam and Hydropower Plant had two of these structures. The Julius Nyerere Dam and Hydropower Plant is, without a doubt, capable of holding tremendous volumes of water. 
However, in the event that the reservoir is full due to flooding or excessive rainfall, there are two spillways that can help take the excess water out in a safe way. The central spillway lies in the center of the main dam. The second one is an emergency spillway and is located at Saddle Dam 1, which is also at the permanent bridge going over the Rafiji River. With the amount of progress Arab contractors and El Suidi Electric have made on the dam, it's safe to say that the Julius Nereda Dam will be in operation anytime soon. Its energy output is guaranteed to double Tanzania's current electricity generation and enhance its ability to provide electric power to its citizens. An increase in the country's electricity production output would in turn usher in novel advancements in the country's education, agriculture, industry, and healthcare sectors. The dam will also grant the government an efficient level of control over the frequent flooding that occurs in the Rafiji River area. From an economic angle, the perks are mouthwatering. In full operation, the dam will definitely create new job opportunities in the thousands, lowering its current unemployment rate of 2.61%. One other ripple effect of the benefits of the dam is the number of new local and foreign investors it will attract. A new wave of investors will be interested to have a stake in the sectors flourishing from the country's massive hydropower plant. Such an interest would ease the tension and dependence on the tourism sector and free up enough space for economic growth. Beyond the economic and environmental benefits, the Julius Nyerere hydropower plant and dam also turns out to be politically impactful, bolstering the political relationship between Tanzania and Egypt, as President Abdel Fattah himself has been closely monitoring the construction process too. As the dam inches closer to full operation, it's no doubt one of the most anticipated projects in Tanzania's history. However, do you think the expectations for the dam are too high? Is it going to be all Tanzania needs to boost its regional and global standing? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.